Have you guys ever looked for 5M graphics and found videos like this? However, the graphics look like this instead? A little disappointing, right? For the past three years, I have been searching for the absolute best real graphics for 5M. Not those photoshopped thumbnails to trick viewers into thinking the graphics are good. Today, I will be showing my graphics mods, graphics settings, and reshade presets. Since GTA was made back in 2013, there's sadly only so much you can do with GTA. But by the end of this video, you should have something like this. To start, there will be a few links down below. You will require all of these, and the only paid thing here is going to be NVE or Natural Visions Evolved. This is the main mod package for 5M, filled with textures and many other effects, and it only costs $10 a month. The other link will be my own reshade presets and the files needed for the presets to work. First, we're going to be installing NVE. Now, this mod was made between 2019 and 2020 by Jamal, or otherwise known as Razed, or Razed. I'm pretty sure it's Razed, but correct me if I'm wrong. To start, download all of the files and place them in a comfortable location where you can find them. Preferably on the desktop as it's the easiest to navigate to. And after that, we're going to navigate to our 5M application data. If you don't know how to get there, just simply right click on your 5M and press open file location. If you do not have it, then you could go down to the bottom left, search up 5M in your windows bar, right click on 5M. And then once you get to this section here where it says startup menu programs, you could just simply right click 5M once more and go to 5M application data. Once you're in here, if you do not have the necessary files as mods or plugins, you could just simply make new ones by right clicking and pressing new folder and just name them accordingly to mods and plugins as you see here. Now to actually install in all the mods. So we're going to open NVE here and we're going to go to main package mods and we're going to go to mods in our 5M application data and we're just going to simply drag all of these in. And once that is done, you're going to go back you're going to go plugins and we're going to drag these to our desktop so we can find them easily later. Next is going to be optional add-ons. Now, if you want to have the same exact ones that I do, I will leave text on screen so you guys can have the same exact ones that I have and any of the plugins ones you could just simply drag to the desktop as well. After getting all of the add-ons installed, we're going to go back to the plugins folder in our 5M directory and we're going to drag all the stuff on the desktop into our folder. Um, if you did the volumetric clouds, I did just the shaders file. It doesn't really matter. As long as you have this file here, the, the volumetric clouds.fx, you can have this in the file that it came in or you could just have it playing out like that. Um, we're going to get to that in a quick second, uh, but first we got to put the reshade in. So we're going to go back and put our reshade shaders um, files into here. So go into reshade shaders and just drag all of these into the plugins file as well. And once that is done, we're going to go into our reshade shaders shaders and we're going to put the volumetric clouds FX in here. And that's going to be it for the volumetric clouds. And that is going to be all for the MVE, but we're still not done. Now it's time to actually get to my presets now. So we're going to go back to the main directory of plugins. We're going to open my file. We're going to open into the reshade shaders. And we're going to do the same exact thing that we did for the volumetric clouds, essentially. So open reshade shaders, go into shaders in the zip file, press control A and drag them into shaders. Now we're going to skip these files. And next, we're going to go back, go to textures, control A, and we're going to put them into textures. Now, these we're going to replace just to ensure that everything works properly. And that should be it for that. Now, we're going to go back to the reshape presets, and you can just simply drag this into your 5M plugins folder. Now, I made this specifically to easily navigate to your presets. You can even put your own presets in here as well. It's just going to make it a lot easier to navigate when we get into game. And that's going to be it for the install part. Now it's time to jump into a 5M server to tweak our mods and make sure everything is working. All right, now that we're in game, I'm going to show a simple and easy trick to make your graphics look way better before we even get into the reshade presets part. So we're going to go into our GTA settings and we're going to go down to graphics. 
and we're going to go to render resolution. The reason why we're going to focus on this is because instead of having our texture and render resolution set to our native monitor resolution, mine being 1080p, so mine's going to be 1920 by 1080. What we can do is actually upscale the game to a higher resolution, even though your monitor isn't 2K, 4K or whatever. This is going to be reduced in performance and it's pretty intense. So if you're lacking frames, I suggest looking for recommended settings for GTA. I will leave a link in the description as well as a card in the top right. If you are interested, you'd be surprised how much FPS you can get without losing that much quality. This is actually a tutorial that I've watched before and actually the same settings I use here as you can see so i'll leave it in the description and also in the top right if you want to watch that after this tutorial but what we're gonna do is we're gonna try to put a render resolution as high as we can without losing that much frames so for me i can actually go up to 4k so i'm gonna personally set mine to 4k however depending on your graphics card and pc you might have to go lower so i'm gonna set mine to 4k so i'm gonna press apply and as you can see here it looks a lot better but I will leave a side by side comparison here. So if you guys want to see, you could kind of see the difference here. Um, but in general, it's just a really good thing to upscale your render resolution. It makes a big difference and it's just way better to increase that. Now, after that, we're going to go to the actual reshade part. So we're going to press insert on our keyboard and it's going to open up this menu. If you want to change that, we can go to settings and change the overlay key. And this is the key that will open up the menu. So I personally have mine set to home. Next, we're going to go to the home and we're going to drag this out just to make it easier to navigate the menu. And now we're going to go up to MVE. We're going to go to reshade presets and double click. And this is where our presets are. So now we're going to select our preset and double click. And once we double click, everything will be put on. So this is what the preset looks like right now. Uh, I'm not sure if I'm going to make any changes, but also I do plan on maybe messing around with more presets in the future. So, but this is just the preset that it is right now. And uh, this is what it looks like. And if we go back, we can also go back to the ray tracing one, the RT stands for ray tracing obviously and non rt is non ray traced the ray tracing one just adds a little bit more detail so you can see here there's a little bit more ambient occlusion there's also a little bit of bounced light so it, depending on where i am you can see how like the scene changes colors a little bit that's because it's trying to reflect the in-game light so if we're facing this way it will actually get darker if we face this way it's going to get brighter just because of the light bouncing off the buildings and other stuff it, i think it's a pretty cool detail because it means that your lighting is always going to be dynamic so like depending where you are your lighting is going to get brighter or darker i think it's really cool but the only downside with the ray tracing one is obviously you're going to lose a lot of performance so i think this is more for your cinematics or screenshots but now we are going to move on to the next part and we're going to go back into our reshape menu we're going to go up here to nve and we're going to drag this out it's just going to make it a little easier to go through the menu when we have it out here. So there's a few things, but we're going to start off with the clouds. Now, if you added the cloud preset, what you can do is you could go into this menu here and we're going to enable clouds so we can actually test this. Um, I'm going to showcase a little bit of the clouds and then we'll move on to the other things. So when you're in a cloudy weather condition, just like you saw me turn on uh, cloudy through the weather menu here, you're going to have these amazing clouds. And what you can do is in the menu, you can actually change the preset. So I have mine on low quality, honestly, like low quality and high quality. There's not much of a difference. At least that's really noticeable from the ground. And these are volumetric. So if you don't know what volumetric means, it pretty much just means that instead of a skybox these are actually 3d so if you fly a plane up here you can actually go through the clouds so you can see that we're actually going through the clouds instead of it just being a skybox but honestly low does a really good job at least from the ground in terms of visual quality so i don't think there's a real necessary need to go to higher um you also have cloud presets so you can actually change the types of clouds i like to have mine on three three just looks a lot nicer it's more density there's more of them you could also change the cloud speed so you can make them go super fast or you can make them go slower 
that's pretty much the clouds and there's not really much else to it right now uh we're gonna go to the next section we're gonna go to graphics now this stuff is new uh if you installed nve and you notice there's a lot of motion blur that's because of this so if you don't like the motion blur, you can disable this. I don't really like motion blur really, but during moving vehicles, it actually makes it look decent. So we're going to turn the motion blur on and we're going to turn up the values. Also sample size is how good the quality is. That makes your performance go down a lot. So probably don't want to go past six, like 60,000. Um, we can increase the motion blur length and as you can see it doesn't look too bad when you're driving a vehicle but i personally don't like motion blur but in a vehicle it doesn't look too bad but yeah if you want to disable that all you gotta simply do is just drag everything to the left and it'll essentially be disabled so now everything's gonna be back to normal so that's the motion blur and now if we go to shaders we're gonna focus on the street lights colors now this is a really cool feature and this is probably everybody's favorite feature of nve is when it's nighttime you have full control of the colors of the street lights so and we can change the color it's really cool because you can change this to whatever you want you can have like a blue street light city need for speed type vibe actually works really good actually hold on i want to look at something real quick actually this looks really cool so if you have motion blur on and the street lights do like a teal color like this it actually looks like a straight up need for speed it looks really cool okay i'm getting a little sidetracked but uh, that's pretty much the street light colors you can change them some street lights obviously aren't affected like in some areas there is some that are set to the street light colors that they are so there is actually a few street lights that are teal that aren't modifiable but these uh majority of these ones are modifiable so if you want to change them you can just simply go to shaders and street light colors i like to have mine on white but i actually might consider going back to teal because i used to have them as teal uh, anyway, so next thing we're going to focus on is if we go down to vehicle, now we have this last menu that I want to showcase. Um, this is a really, really important menu because this controls the light intensity of vehicles. So what we can do here is if you see on my vehicle, if we go to headlights for nighttime multiplier, there's a day and night. So if your daylights uh, lights are too bright, you go to daylight and then night self-explanatory um but if we go to headlights we can change those up and down so obviously the headlights will get less and more intense same thing with the taillights if the taillights are too bright or too dim we can change those um indicators even if we press our indicator like oops uh, so if we have our indicator on and it's too bright we can also change the intensity of that um Another thing is reverse in lights. So if we turn on our reverse in lights, we can change the intensity of those. Uh, default lights, that's LEO lights. And I'll show that in a second because I'm not in an LEO car. You have brake lights, so you can change the intensity of the brake lights. Um, middle brake light, that's usually if cars have like a secondary brake light, like in the middle. Like, um, I don't think I have an example, but if a car has like a brake light on the top, that's the middle brake light. Um, now we're going to quickly go into this. So just like I was saying, you do have, uh, settings for police cars. So if the police car lights are too bright or too dim, in my case, they're too dim minus the spotlights. Um, if your police lights are too dim, you can change the default light to higher and that will change the police car lights. So I'm going to have that and then same thing for daylight. So when you change it to daytime, these will also change to the daytime multipliers. And now we can change these separately. So if we want our daytime to be a little bit brighter, we can do that. And same thing with the brake lights, headlights, etc. So that's essentially it for the reshade. That's the simplest way to get your graphics to look as amazing as possible. And I'm sure there is more ways to mod it by mixing other mods or messing around with the reshade a little bit more. But I personally appreciate how easy and simple MVE is to install. But they also have amazing features because of the mod creator updates NVE every month. So if you are looking for the best graphics and also the simplest graphics without modifying a bunch of files and stuff, this is the simplest way. So and with my preset, I think that the game looks a lot better um, again for 
comparison because I, don't, I I'm sure there's also really good NVE presets out there that are maybe even better than mine but I personally like mine I think it looks good and it definitely beats this really gray dark sinister type look that the stock MBE has so um, if you like this tutorial make sure to share to uh, your friends and um, leave a like as it helps out a lot and uh, like I said, also make sure to check out that uh, performance graphics video. It's not made by me, it's made by some other creator, I forget their name, but make sure to check that out. It's really, really worth it. You'll get a lot more FPS and quality out of your game so you can push your render resolution higher and make your 5M look even better. So, but thank you for watching and hope you guys all enjoy your day.